YouTube man, what's up? I'm back with a crazy video. Not really crazy. I just really this has been on my chest for a while. It's definitely something I want to talk about and help all you guys get better at Madden. And that's the you know the the meta defenses people like to see say and pretty much everybody's running it from weekend league to solos to the top competitive players in the world. We just saw the Arizona Club Series. I know T. Davis was running it. I know uh, Lil Burke was running it. And I believe Trey was running it. K-Mac was the only one that wasn't running 3-5 through five odd. And honestly, to me right now, it's one of the best defenses in the game. And it's pretty much but pretty much what everybody's running. And I know you guys have ran into this a lot. And we saw all over the weekend, you know, guys that, that are in the club series that made the live event that obviously prepared a lot for Madden, you know, and they've sat and labbed and labbed. And it still works on everybody. You know, no matter how many people we ID, what we slide, how many people we block, that looper still comes in. Or the D-tackle still gets an A-gap. So it's really tough to play against, man. And to me personally, I mean, there's a couple things I want to help you guys get better at, you know, playing against it. Because I know you're facing it a lot. We all want those weekend league rewards. We all want to beat everybody that runs this defense. And I know a lot of you guys, I mean, complain and, and you know, say it's cheesy or it's the glitch play or it's defense. And I want you guys to like re remove that thought process, remove that negativity in your mind, and really understand how to attack this defense. Now I'm sitting here as I, I'm going to tell you I'm one of the best Madden players in the world, and I still get screamed at and get locked up from time to time with 3-3-5 odds, especially against great defensive players that use the defense. Now against the weekend league champion or regular guy, they're going to run this defense. It's not going to be as effective as somebody that's great at Madden will run this defense, a great defensive player. But it, it, it really is tough to play against, and I, I want you guys to really understand how to attack it and understand how the defense works. I mean, sometimes when you run a defense a lot, you understand where the holes are. You understand where it's kind of weak. And I will tell you guys pretty much, or, or help you guys break it down. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you how to block it. I'm not gonna tell you what routes to run. If you want to check out stuff like that, you can hit below Madden Turf. You can check out my offensive ebook, and you can also watch me play live on Twitch. I mean, I play against this defense a lot. I've, I've been pretty good against it. My entire offense this year, going into the year, was pretty much to play against this cover three pressure type of defense, get rid of the ball really quickly. It's something that we had to do a lot last year. And it's pretty astounding to me that the same defense that was dominant last year is the best defense in the game again this year. Pretty wild uh, that, you know, we still can't block this loop consistently. We know exactly what guy's going to loop in. We know exactly the setup, and, and we still can't block it. It's frustrating, and I know you guys are frustrated because I'm frustrated, you know. And so I know if the defense frustrates me, it's going to get under your guys' skin, and I don't want you guys to just give up, and I don't want you guys to have a negative attitude. I want you guys to understand pretty much what I think going into the play defensively. I think I think you guys got to understand how to attack it, understand where the weaknesses are, and, you know, try to find a hole, you know, try to find where to throw the ball and where to attack because that obviously you're going to have to pass against it. No matter how good they make the run, I've always said no matter how good they make the run, you're going to have to make two or three plays a game in the passing game. And that's something I'm going to show you guys kind of what I think going into each passing play against it. I'm not going to show you specific plays, but I'll show you what I think going into defense against or going offense against 3-3-5 odd. So let's take a look. This is the setup. This is 3-3-5 odd flipped. Anybody that's that good at this game right now is going to run 3-3-5 odd flipped. I wish I could tell you why. I don't really know. I think <laughs> I don't really know. But odd flipped is kind of kind of been the meta especially since towards the end of last year i know something kiv ran a lot especially to win the man championship or the ultimate league whatever we call that but i know he ran through through for odd, odd flipped it definitely was a defense that came on the scene really quick again this year i know joe rice ran it a lot in the leaderboards and it was definitely something you needed to play against early you know you needed to play against and get get reps against it because the first time it hits you it's pretty serious now the one thing about 335 odd, and I'll show you in, in this in this uh demo just uh, just a graphic I'm going over pretty much, is that this year, this linebacker here, this guy, right here, he's pretty he's a D lineman. Now I know he's in between I mean he's in between a um a D lineman and he's in between a, a linebacker, but he's at, he is a linebacker. But his adjustments are on the D-line. 
So when you crash your D-line, you're going to crash this guy. And so what that does is that obviously most people want to crash their D-line, either crash it up, crash it left, crash it right. And so what that instantly does is that puts that guy in a blitzing angle. It no longer has him in a flat zone. As you see, what he's originally is, he's in a flat zone, in the seam flat here, or a hard flat or cloud flat, whatever it may be. So when they crash their line, it's going to make him crash. So when, the first thing you got to realize is when you're facing that is that that guy right there, he's going to be in, in a crashing. He's going to be blitzing. That's pretty much what this defense is. It's pretty much these four down linemen, one, two, three, four. And then this guy, obviously, is the looper right here. He wants to come in this this A gap, confuse this guard and this the center right here, and go ahead and come through the A gap. Now what a pro player will do It'll make this symmetrical and bring this nickel corner over here. So now you have dual edge, kind of a threatening dual edge, so you can mix up your coverages and have this looper in here. But essentially what we need to remember is that this guy is a D lineman. He's going to be crashing. So against most guys you play online, that's your four-man rush. Boom. This is your this is your fifth. Hopefully your running back will pick this guy up. I wish I could tell you guys I know how to pick these guys up. But even after thousands and thousands of snaps against his defense, he still comes and gets me from time to time. I'm starting to worry about, think that if my running back's on this side, I'll be better because he does loop through this A-gap. But, like I said, I don't know the answer for that for sure. So, knowing that these five guys are rushing, this is how I pretty much want to attack this. What we want to do is kind of erase these five guys. Because these five guys will, what we call it, they will rush the quarterback. So now when you drop back to attack, you kind of eliminate these five guys from your passing, from your reads. These five guys are gone. So now we only have to read, pretty much we only have to read the five outside guys in the nickelback and the one user. So you got one, two, you're going to have a corner out here, other safety and a corner out here. Now this is a cover three shell, meaning, you know, this guy goes back here, this guy goes back here. This guy goes back here, boom. And this guy has the flat over there. This guy's in the yellow zone, but most people will put him in a flat. And then have the entire middle of the field by themselves. Now that's stressful, even for a great player. I'll take it, we'll zoom it out here and we'll go ahead and look at this. Now, like I said, most of the time this guy will be blitzing because he is a D lineman. He is in a blitzing. He will blitz when they crash their line. So you'll have a weakness over here because this guy will be blitzing. Now, if they don't, they don't. You have to. That's just something you have to read after the snap. But what I love to do is one. Let's just put it this way, chat. Or I say chat. That's how you know I stream too much. But my point is here is that this is a corner, right? This is a corner. Your Darius Slay, your Deion Sanders, Champ Bailey, whoever they may have, is a corner. So obviously he's going to have 90 zone, 95 zone, 90 speed. He's going to be pretty good, right? So naturally, when I'm dropping back to pass, I want to avoid this guy. I want to attack this big, fat linebacker. Either he's blitzing or he's in his zone. Like I told you, most of the time he's going to be blitzing. So boom, instead of having to attack three people, now I'm over here, I'm just attacking two, the safety and the corner. He's either in a flat zone, he's going to be in a deep blue, or he's going to be in a flat zone. So pretty much I want to attack this side. Whether it be whatever route combination I want to use, I've posted route combinations below in my YouTube. You can check out the other videos what route combinations I like to use to attack the sideline because we just talked about how this guy this user is going to be stressed in the middle of the field so he's not going to run out here and cover this what you're doing is you're attacking the side of the field you know where they blitz from or because the user is not going to be there because he has so much stress in the middle of the field because he's blitzing you so when we go back to this view like I said you're going to have like I said pretty much this safety in this corner to attack on the left side of the field. This guy's going to blitz, and he's going to have the whole middle of the field. So if they put him in a flat zone, you obviously have a big hole right here, or you can attack with either you know a swing route to the running back and a curl to Alshon Jeffrey to stop right here. So if he's in a hard flat, you'll have the curl. If he's in a cloud flat, you'll have the running back swing route. When I attack 3-3-5 three, three, odd, 95% of my passes will be to the sideline. Because one, I know where their user is and I don't want to throw near him. The guy with the circle under his feet, I want to keep the ball as far away as possible from this guy. So against 335 odd, I know 90% of my passes will be to the outside. 
So, like I said, I like to attack the linebacker, the end side, whatever this may be, more than I like to attack the nickelback side because naturally there's less coverage in this player than there is in this player. So, so on and so forth. My, my whole, I say all this to say I like to keep the ball to the sideline. We know this is a cover three shell. We know that one of these two guys has flat responsibility or this guy has flat responsibility. Whatever side you're looking at, either the linebacker or the safety or this side just the nickelback will have the flat responsibility. Now, obviously, guys, you can change all the coverage of this defense. You can quickly change this into a cover two if you wanted to. You can change it into a cover four. It can be man coverage. It can be a bunch of different things. And that's why I said this defense is really good against with somebody that with really good defensive ability and a really smart man player. But the people you guys are playing against in weekend league, your friends, your buddies, whoever you're playing for $5 on Players Lounge, they might not necessarily be joke or problem or skimbo on defense. They won't be. So what you're going to get is a lot of this basic cover three look. They're going to rely on this loop. They're going to rely on this pressure between the, the center and the linebacker. And they're not going to stress too much about their coverage. Now, if they start switching up your coverages, you've got to attack coverages a little bit differently. But me, for myself personally, I like to attack the sidelines. Either, Like I said, either a, a flat and a curl, or you can put a flat and you can put a slant back this way. Now, a lot of people put the flat because what the flat's going to do is take this the flat zone all the way out of the picture and give a big hole right here to Mike Wallace, as you see here, running in here on a slant. Whatever it may be, I like to throw the ball outside the numbers on this defense. Now, you can see my ebook, New Orleans Saints. That's what I like to do. I like to put Gurley a tight end, attack the sideline, attack the sideline, attack the sideline, make them stress and really just not be able to just sit in the middle of the field. I think the worst thing you can do against this defense is pass in the middle of the field because not only is that where the user is, this might be where this three rec is, and I, I can't tell you one Madden player in the world that actually knows what a three rec does. Because I don't, he does whatever he wants, especially if he's a great player. So I want to avoid the user, I want to avoid the three back, I want to attack this linebacker or this nickel DB, preferably this linebacker. Because he's either blitzing and leaving a huge void over here, or he's a bad linebacker and flat zone responsibility, one or the other. I mean, these are just a couple things that I look at before the snap against 3-3-5 odd. <clears throat> and they're definitely things that you guys need to work on to play against this defense. It sucks that we can't just ID this guy and block him every time. I mean, it infuriates me that, that you know, we got this ID to Mike feature. I feel like if I ID this guy, he should be eliminated. Now, I, I wish it was something where, you know, he brings this other linebacker down, and then we're, we're all of a sudden we're in a guessing game. Maybe you user this guy, and now i got to guess which one you're going to blitz. But it's so obvious that the same guy loops every time. We can't pick him up consistently. It's super frustrating. I mean, I don't know what the ID to Mike feature does when you when you ID this linebacker. To me, it's inconsistent, and it's frustrating. But but if you want to play man at this level and you want to play man, you want to get better at the game, you have to learn to attack this defense. I mean, it's pretty much what I, I you know designed my entire offense around. Like I said, you can check that out on man turf and, and find the different routes that I use to really attack the sideline. And there's also YouTube videos below in my catalog for sideline attacking routes because I don't want to be near this three rack and I don't want to be near this linebacker. So that's pretty much just things. I hope you guys use this video well. I hope you guys enjoy it. If there's anything else you're really struggling with 335 odd, please comment below. See what, what gives you trouble. The last thing I'll tell you guys, it pisses me off, man, because people talk about running against 335 odd. I'm not going to tell you it's successful. I'm not going to tell you how what run works, but let's put it this way. This linebacker is going to the right. The last thing you want to do is run to the right because he's putting another person on that side of the field. If you're going to run the ball against 3 through 5 odd, please run to the vacated A gap that this linebacker is popping out of. That would help you a lot more than running to the right. That's my only advice I'll give the run. I'm not a runner. I don't know the answers for that, but that's just simple numbers, everything. But, you know, I'm not going to say the run kills this because it doesn't. But like I said, if there's anything else you're struggling with this defense, please comment below, man. I'll try to help you guys as much as I can because I don't want one defense to be this dominant, especially with, with amateur people using it. I understand if a, a great defensive player is using it, but I don't want amateur players getting stops on you guys just using this basic defense.